Indiana is the worst Power 5 football program in the nation. In 2023, they went 3-9, and nine, making it 21 losing seasons since the year 2000. That is just insane. It's been 56 years since its last Big Ten title in 1967. And just as a reference, historically, we were at war in the Vietnam War here in the U.S., so in this rebuild, we attempt to rebuild the worst Power 5 team in the country with the transfer portal and a new coaching staff, putting together a new roster in our first year will not be easy. So let's get straight into how we're looking going in to 2024. Let's start out with our head coach, Roy Cunningham, an unknown coach here in the coaching carousel that happens every single offseason. But the Indiana Hoosiers have made a bold hire. He decided to go and hire another offensive coordinator from another program, Scott Isferding. So he is going to be our offensive coordinator who will call plays for the offense. And we will roll with his dedicated playbook with the Ohio State spread. So we will see how that fits the rest of our players, but it's going to be tough because running a spread when you don't even have a good roster is very, very tough. And we will run the 4-3 multiple under Scott Power. And now we get into the roster. Starting out with one of the players that returns to the program in Omar Cooper Jr., He's a sophomore, a guy that has a lot of potential. He had about two, 300 yards receiving this past season. He returns as the number one target here for the offense, and a lot of the offense is going to run through him. He's going to get moved around quite a bit. He is one of the fastest players on the entire roster with 89 speed and one of the best route runners. Our best defensive leader is a transfer from Northern Iowa, in EJ McMacklin. McMacklin comes into this season after playing Indiana in the past season with 11 career NCAA sacks. So he comes in as a sophomore with a bit of experience and probably our best weapon as far as getting after the quarterback. Well, speaking of quarterback, let's start out with our quarterbacks. Well, we have a lot of work to do here in this quarterback room. We start with Sam Bellissimo, a junior who is a decent thrower of the football. I wouldn't say bad, but also not great. Backing him up will be a more mobile Jacoby Ellis. He is a freshman. Now, he is a big body man. I mean, this guy, he can do anything on the field except throw the football accurately. And we're looking at a guy that stands at six foot four, 230. He's going to get better, but is going to need some work. Maybe our most mobile quarterback on the roster, though, is Jaden Gordon, another freshman quarterback. He is a little bit smaller than the other aforementioned two quarterbacks. But Jaden Gordon is 84 speed, 86 acceleration. We could see some packages with him running the option. The running back room looks like this. Prince Anjoku is a sophomore. Now, he is probably the most well-rounded running back if you look at everything. He is six foot one, 195. He's got 87 speed, and as a sophomore, I mean, he's going to eventually get that speed up, and with training, you never know. He could be in the 90s. Our backup running backs aren't great. Kyle Lawson is a freshman, 5'11", one of those another one of those guys that's going to have to develop in the program along with Marvin Ornis. Both of these guys are different. Ornis is more of a power back. And then obviously we're going to have to recruit at every single position on the offensive side, because just looking at the overall ratings, we have two fullbacks, uh, 60 overall and under our running backs are in the mid sixties overall. And we're going to just need to add some weapons. But to start out this series, Cam Shells is going to be one of the top receivers next to Omar Cooper Jr., 70 overall. He's a decent route runner, but we're going to need to find who's going to step up here as the number two receiver in this room. Maybe one candidate is going to be number two, Kilo Green. He is a junior. He doesn't have the greatest speed, only with 82 speed, but he is kind of the one of the most well-rounded receivers on this receiving core. He's also six foot three, a little slight of build, 175. 
but he could do some things. Then we have number 81, the first of two brothers, Aolani Vakasau Sao. Vakasau Sao is 6'2", 205. He is a freshman, and he's going to be actually a pretty good target because he's got 77 catching, which is one of the highest on the roster. And then at returner, we will have Booby Jones. He will be the primary punt returner, and we'll see if he can work his way up to be a kick returner as well. But right now, Omar Cooper Jr. is our best, best playmaker, so we're going to have to put him back to return kicks as well. Tight end is one of my favorite positions to have on a roster because you can do so many things with a good tight end. So Thomas Bailey right now is going to be a guy that is going to have a target on his back because if he doesn't produce, I'm going to be looking to replace him immediately at tight end because our tight end room is not deep at all. We have Jackson Vega, who is a six foot four freshman, but he's in his mid 50s overall. Not great at all. And we only have really two active tight ends. Our offensive line is not very good. As you can see, this is probably going to be the number one thing we recruit right away in season one. We only have a couple of linemen that are even close to 70 overall, including Goodson at right guard. He is 73 overall. Overall, Ty Bellion is going to move over to left guard. He's going to start at 69 overall. And then Gus Robertson may be the best offensive lineman we have because he's a freshman and he's 70 overall starting it out. So after some training, maybe he will get better. But I think offensive line is definitely going to be something we have to recruit. Let's move over to the defensive side of the ball where we talked about EJ McMacklin already. He's going to be obviously our best pass rusher. We have some other backup defensive ends like Corey Travis, who is 67 overall. Smokey Hammerstone is 50 overall. I'm hoping that one of these guys just pops and hopefully the ratings don't reflect their actual outcome. Now, coming off of the opposite edge of EJ McMacklin is going to be number 73, Jacob Mitchell, a senior. So we're going to have to replace him really, really early in this rebuild and see if we can obviously have a good defense eric waterspoon is going to be a guy i really really want to emphasize development here in this series and he's going to be one of those guys that's going to be thrown into that pool he might not play a lot here in year one but we'll see what happens i really want to go after a strong defensive tackle and we have a couple of them kel bingham number 90 and joshua cook number 98 are going to be our top two guys both kind of our of the similar build, to be honest with you, six foot four, 315 is Bingham. They're just all around that kind of build. Nobody does anything too special. So I think I'm going to be rotating these guys uh, around quite a bit. Madden Field is another guy that I could throw into this mix. And then Magnus Whitehair has a little bit of developing to go. A guy that's going to be super, super important here in the middle of this defense because he is going to be our team captain going into this year is David Hardwick Jr., a big hitter across the middle. You do not want to catch the ball like you just saw in that clip going over across his body because he will lay it on you. We do have a senior backing him up in Zach Powell. He's decent, 67 overall, but definitely we're going to need to recruit another linebacker because you never know what could happen in case of injury. As we move over to outside linebacker and look at a couple of guys that I do want to highlight, including K-Hai Vakasau Sao. He's going to be a guy that is going to be one of those players that could pop up in the stat sheet, but he'll have to develop as well. He's just a freshman, so his brother plays on offense. He plays on defense, but I do want to highlight a really good linebacker in James Woodblock. He is a sophomore. He is 69 overall. He's going to get better throughout the year, and he is one of our smarter linebackers with 77 play recognition. But the most athletic linebacker we have is a true freshman, 6'4", 225, Braylon Jennings. You're going to see him moved all around. You're going to see him on special teams also. And we're going to see what we can do with that speed on defense. He is one of the faster uh, linebackers or non-defensive backs on this roster. Looking at defensive back, we have a couple of decent cornerbacks, but nobody that's great. First, let's start with Asante Lewis Jr., who is a junior, six foot three, 185. He's 87 speed, 92 acceleration. He's got decent man and zone coverage combined together, 77 and 78 respectively. But I think we're going to need a true number one cornerback in the future. And maybe 
just maybe we have that guy opposite of him number 24 roy cunningham jr the coach's son a part of the hiring of Roy Cunningham was that he would be bringing his son with him, who was one of the top recruits coming out of high school last year. Cunningham Jr. can play both sides of the football, so depth is really going to be important at cornerback. We have Nathan McNeely, Vincent Hunt, guys that do things specifically well, but they're not very well-rounded. So we're going to see who's going to be the defensive playmakers. We have Ryan Thiggy here at safety. He's decent, 85 speed, 78 zone. So he's going to be obviously the guy over the top of the defense. And then we have some other safeties who are decent, but nobody that's really, really great. Now, our special teamers, Nico Chibuke, is going to be a guy that's going to hit some field goals. I think he can hit from about 48, 49 yards out. He's got 82 kick power. But our best and highest overall player on the entire roster is our punter in William Coleman. He's a junior, 85 kick power. So I guess we're going to be changing the field position pretty well here in season one at least. So before we get into the actual gameplay here and into the depths of this series, I want to talk about the sliders. Now, this is going to be the slider set. This comes with College Football Revamped. If you look at their Discord, you can download different profiles and they will have certain sliders attached to them. As you can see in the top right, CFR Patch V2.5. I really liked this slider set when I played with it before and it still remains true. It's very, very good. You can see the sliders right here on the screen. And kind of how we will do this is on defense, we will have coach suggestions as the called play and on offense i'm actually going to allow myself to at least call the formation at least starting out right now before i you know really trust coach suggestions coach suggestions in ncaa doesn't really open up the playbook enough so i'm gonna actually call the plays myself so let's talk recruiting really quick i'm not gonna cover it a lot today but there will be a recruiting episode and I will be covering recruiting throughout the season and you can get into the series. Obviously, I did have a community tab here a couple of weeks ago to get into the series. So all of these guys are uh, submissions here from the YouTube community tab. So it's going to be a lot of fun this year getting you guys involved in this series. The Big Ten looks a lot different here in 2024. We have four new pack. 12 teams usc washington ucla and also oregon they joined the big 10 so now a full 18 teams i believe in real life you can only fit 16 here in this game and we get into the schedule now it's going to be a lot more tough here in the big 10 so we will start out with a kind of easier game in sacred heart just to get us warmed up in this series we're getting into that game in a second we then play Maryland and then at USC. So they they will play their first home Big Ten game versus the Indiana Hoosiers. We will then play Coastal Carolina and then get a much needed bye week after the first four games. That's when we'll probably uh, cover recruits for the first time. We then will play against Michigan State, Michigan, Louisiana Tech, Minnesota, who in this series has a very good freshman quarterback. I can't wait to play him. And then we play Purdue. Ohio State, Wisconsin, and Penn State to finish the season. If you thought Indiana had it tough in the last 20 years, this schedule continues that trend. So we open this series versus Sacred Heart here at home. The home crowd is excited here for this new era of football, and we will see if Roy Cunningham can get it done with the help of his son as a starting cornerback. And we will also see him on offense as well. And you'll get to know the team today. Here we go. The opening kickoff is underway as here is Omar Cooper Jr., one of those returners from a year ago. And he will get to about the 22-yard line as Cooper Jr. is one of two starters from last year's Indiana real-life team to return to the roster. So here we go. The first play on offense is a handoff up the middle, and that is Anjoku who picks up a gain of seven. And the sophomore is going to be a guy that's going to tote the rock probably the most this year out of all the running backs in this room. Back to him. Handoff up the middle, and he picks up a gain of five and a first down here on the first series. 
Anjoku is more of a well-balanced back out of anybody on the roster. He can run the ball for power and speed, and there's a nice throw across the middle. It's Kilo Green, a gain of 22 for the first catch of the season. Back to Anjoku, who trips in the backfield and picks up a gain of four. Three carries, 5.3 yards per carry so far here. Here's a throw out to the right side. This is going to be Thomas Bailey here for the first down. And he's a guy that's going to really need to step up this year because I do like to lean on tight ends more than most positions here in this offense. Here's a throw to the right side. This is going to be Kilo Green again. His second catch of the drive is inside the five, and he runs over a defender. But there's a flag on the play holding. So this one will come all the way back to the 41-yard line. Number 83, Cam Shells runs in motion. This is Bellissimo who keeps it right here and picks up a gain of nine. Bellissimo isn't the most mobile quarterback we have, but he can run the football. In the field goal range now, it's a third and seven. Bellissimo throws across the middle, and he had Anjoku wide open, and he cannot make the throw. So we do bring in the kicker here to make this field goal, and he will give us the first points of this season is looking around the Big Ten. Oregon in their first Big Ten game will blow out Minnesota 40 to 14. And oh yeah, Bo Nix is still on the roster. There is some roster blips and some guys are in this roster that return. So here's the first play of the game here for the defense and that's David Hardwick Jr. He gets to the quarterback. We sent the stunt right there and the Sacred Heart quarterback tries to get away. It's a loss of three. Second and 13, here's a handoff. This time to the running back, West, who breaks a tackle, still on his feet, and eventually gets brought down by E.J. McMacklin, but not after a gain of 10. It's third and three now. Here is Harrison, dropping back, trying to scramble away, and he goes down. It's Hardwick Jr. again. It's a gain of zero, but they will actually credit him with the sack. So on the opening drive, David Hardwick is going to get two sacks, and he is the team captain coming into this year, and he makes his presence known. So here is Sam Bellissimo running a receiver in motion, running some option. He has space up the middle and picks up the first down right there. It's a gain of 13 yards on the option keeper, and it's a first down. To about the 47-yard line, Anjoku still in the game. Here's Omar Cooper Jr. getting the ball for the first time. Good block by Anjoku, and Cooper tries to make a man miss but picks up a gain of seven. And Cooper is going to be a very featured player here in this offense. We're going to move him all around. He can play on the outside, play in the slot, wherever. Back to Anjoku, handoff up the middle, and he has a first down. We're across the 50 once again here on the second drive of the game for the offense. The safety creeps up here for Sacred Heart. Bellissimo runs Omar Cooper in motion. He gives it to him. It's another counter play, and he picks up a gain of six. So Cooper hasn't been getting involved here in the passing game, but has gotten two carries already. Just outside of field goal range, Joku tackled in the backfield. It's a loss of three yards. And now we're all the way back at the 35-yard line. Bellissimo now third and 14, a short throw out to Booby Jones, number eight, and he picks up a gain of seven, but he is just on the edge of field goal range, and the kicker does come in, and this one looks like it's from about 49 yards or so, and this one is good. So here we go, 6 nothing lead here for Indiana as we enter the second quarter. Here is Harrison on the quarterback keeper, and he picks up a gain of 14. McMacklin on the tackle. It's enough for the first Sacred Heart first down. So here's the tight end back running in motion. Back to West, running over a defender, and he picks up just three. That's Asante Lewis Jr., who just got absolutely ran over on that play. It's a third and seven. Screen pass called out to the right side. It's number 83 Brown, but he gets stopped. And that's um, Makai Kaihei who comes up for the tackle. And he is the junior starting strong safety. And he forces another punt here for this Indiana defense. Here is Anjoku who gets the carry up the middle and he has a gain of 10. He's been running the ball pretty well so far to start this game. 
Just about six minutes left here. Bellissimo tries to keep it on the triple option. That's a loss of three. That time it does not work. Back at the 22 now. It's a third and 13. Bellissimo rolls to the right side, throws on the run. He's got Omar Cooper Jr. And it's a first down throw, a gain of 14 yards. That's his second catch of the game. So now here's a handoff back to Anjoku, who picks up just a gain of four. And we can use a little bit of clock on this drive as we, if we play our cards right. Third and five now. Here's Bellissimo stopping, throwing. It's Omar Cooper again. He makes a man miss and picks up a gain of 12. And another first down here for this Indiana offense. Bellissimo doesn't have the greatest accuracy downfield, which is why you see us going short quite a bit. And that's a catch by Booby Jones, but a loss of three. The defense sniffed that one out right away. It's now third and very long again, third and 15. Here's a deep shot. Look to the right side. It's Cam Shells who has it in his hands and gets it knocked away. The hand got in there at the last second, and we have to punt the ball away for the first time in this game. So here is Sacred Heart on offense. They have barely got across the 50 this game so far, and that is a sack. E.J. McMacklin, his first sack of his Indiana career, and he was the big transfer coming over in the portal. And that's a big time sack, bringing it to another third down here for the Sacred Heart. His throw to the sideline. This one's caught by Brown, and he comes back across the first down marker, and he's going to be just one yard short. So we do get possession here back before halftime. Still up 6 nothing here. Bellissimo throws to the right side. It's Cam Shells. This time he holds on to it for a gain of 16 yards and a first down. Nice throw right there by Bellissimo. Another read option. He keeps it this time and picks up a first down. That is really working today. They've stopped it a couple times, but Bellissimo has gotten loose. Now a second and one now. Play action fake. Throw to the right side. Kilo Green runs out of real estate. The pressure was right in Bellissimo's face, and he dumps it off, but they lose four. Bellissimo, third and five. Here is Roy Cunningham Jr. in on offense, and he gets his first career reception. It's a gain of eight for the coach's son. Hurry up offense now. Five wide receivers out there. Cunningham Jr. runs in motion this play. Bellissimo in the pocket. Uh-oh, facing pressure. Throws deep one-on-one -on -one for Bailey, and it's intercepted. He was looking for the tight end, Thomas Bailey, and Bailey doesn't even jump to go after the football, and it ends up in the hands of Sacred Heart. So a minute and a half to go here in the first half. Pressure getting to Harrison. It's a sack. Another one for the defense. That's four in the first half. That's Jacob Mitchell. The senior gets to the quarterback, and he just literally just runs around the left tackle right there. It's now a third and 12, and it looks like Sacred Heart is probably going to concede right here. They're going to run the football. There's a handoff to West. He gets some space and does get tackled for a gain of six. But Indiana has one last timeout. They decide to burn it. So 31 seconds to go here before halftime. Here's Bellissimo throwing to the right side into traffic looking for Kilo Green. It's intercepted. Bellissimo makes another mistake here before halftime. But this time he gives Sacred Heart great field position across the 50. They have one timeout remaining. Here is Harrison trying to scramble. It's a sack. It's E.J. McMacklin, his second of the half. And Sacred Heart tries to run the hurry-up offense here. They get it back to the line for one more play. Harrison under pressure again, and McMacklin gets there for his third sack of the first half. Wow, a defensive game to start out this series. It is 6-0 in Indiana's favor. What a first half to open this series is here we go. Indiana on defense now trying to come up with a stop here to give our offense the ball back and a little happy on that one. So they're gonna call a false start on the defense. Actually on the offense, wow. 
Here is Harrison now under center with a first and 15. Here is Broussard with a catch across the middle. That is a gain of eight. Now a second and seven now. Play action fake. Now the quarterback keeps takes it and keeps off. Wow, keeps it and takes off. Jay Harrison, gain of 11, first down. He's been sat quite a bit in this one. It's probably him seeing ghosts in the pocket now. He's moving around, throwing to left side, and he's got a receiver, Joel Lane. And he picks up a gain of 12, beating the freshman, Roy Cunningham Jr. Here's a handoff now from the pistol formation. Here's Griffin getting loose. And that one may have been a face mask, but they don't call it. It's a gain of 10. So here is Harrison pitching out to Griffin now. He's by himself. He throws a stiff arm, and that one will be a big 15-yard gain. And Tyler Griffin is a smaller back, and he just makes our defensive back look silly right there with a stiff arm. Here is a designed quarterback rollout, and that's an easy sack by Zach Powell. And I don't know what they were thinking on that one. They had a man wide open across the middle, by the way. Third and 15, Harrison. In the pocket, five wide, throws to an open man. He's got Dodds breaking a tackle. Sacred Heart scores. And they will have their first lead of this ball game with an excellent second effort by Dodds. And it's 7-6 Sacred Heart. Is Indiana in trouble of losing their first game in this series? And there's a drop by Kilo Green on the sideline. Redo here, second and 10. Bellissimo in the pocket, throws short. He's got Jackson Vega for a gain of eight in the backup tight end. Get some playing time and a reception, the first of his career. Anjoku in the game, handoff up the middle, and that's a big time run on a third and short. He's only got eight carries, but 45 yards, he's been pretty efficient. Uh-oh, another read option. And the, absolute, the defensive end absolutely bit on that read option. We pick up nine. Hurry up offense now. Here's Kilo Green running in motion now. More option. Handoff back to Anjoku. And he has the first down. Eight yards on that one. Seems like he's been consistently seven yards, eight yards, eight yards. It's been pretty efficient running attack here. Here's Kilo Green with a catch to the right side. He dropped that one earlier. He has that one for a gain of nine. Now we get it to a third and short. Back to Anjoku. He has the first down to gain of eight again. And he is running the football pretty well to this point. As now we're inside the red zone to about the 10. Five wide receivers out here for Indiana. Here's a throw to the end zone. Looking for Bailey again at the pylon and it's just overthrown. And now it's fourth and five. What do we do? We bring in Shibuke to give us a two-point lead. Three field goals here for the offense. And now our defense has to come out again, make a stop. Here is Harrison this time, scrambling. He's got space. He has the first down and more. And he picks up a gain of 11. Somehow this game is still really close. It seems like Indiana's been dominating. But here is Harrison taking off again. He tries to scramble. And this one's on the ground. Picked up by Asante Lewis. And it's a turnover for the defense. It looked like Harrison just tried to fight through a tackle right there by David Hardwick, and he cannot hold on to the football, and Indiana takes back over. So can we capitalize off of the turnover now at the 50? Here's a quick throw. It's Cam Shells who's open off of the line of scrimmage. It's a gain of 16 and a first down. Press coverage, that's an easy read right there. No linebacker in the open zone. And now here we are on the football this time. Anjoku gets to the outside. He has a little bit of speed, and he picks up a gain of eight. I said it earlier, but another gain of eight by Anjoku. Checking into the game is Marvin Ornis at running back, the true freshman, running Kilo Green in motion. Here's Bellissimo keeping it. He's got space. Nobody in front of him, and he runs into the lineman that time. Gus Robertson, the freshman right tackle, got in his way, and he probably could have scored on that. But now it's first and goal at the nine. We run the hurry up offense. Bellissimo in the pocket. Throws to Vaca Sao Sao. And he dives in. It's a touchdown. The first touchdown of this series. And it goes to Aolani.
Baka Sao Sao. The freshman receiver out of Hawaii comes through and he will score here. It's 16 to seven. So here we are back on defense and here is Sacred Heart getting busy right away in a big first down run here for the Sacred Heart offense. Six for 48 for Tyler Griffin. He's a smaller back too and he's not even the starter. Here's a quick throw to the right side and Asante Lewis, instead of picking that one off, just knocks it to the ground. How about Jay Harrison? He's nine of 10. That was his first incompletion of the entire game. Here is Griffin now, another delayed handoff and he is stopped in the backfield. It's Makai Kaihi for the stop. It's a loss of three. It's now third and 13. Harrison throwing to the right side. He's got Dodds who scored earlier and Dodds falls to the ground. And now Sacred Heart is lining up to go for a fourth and 10 at the 39. Harrison under pressure, throws short. He's got Dodds who turns up field and gets it. Wow, I thought we were gonna stop him right there but he picks up 12 and converts. This drive continues back to Griffin. Handoff up the middle, it's a gain of nine here for Tyler Griffin. And now they get it inside the red zone. And now Sacred Heart is cooking on this drive. Still only down by nine. Read option. It looks like he gives it this time. Probably the wrong decision. And it's James Woodblock with his first tackle for loss of the game. And he just swallowed him up that time. That brings it to a third and 13. Draw play to Griffin. Throwing off a defender. And gets tackled from behind by McMacklin. And they will have to settle for three, but they will line up to go for it on a fourth and five. I don't know about this decision right here. Here is Harrison throwing across the middle. It's caught by, I don't even care, Kyle Harper and David Hardwick Jr. makes the stop. Wow, what a questionable play call by Sacred Heart right there. I have no idea why they would go for it. But now we have to go 93 yards here to score. Here is a quick throw out to the right side. It's Thomas Bailey with the catch. He picks up a gain of eight. One thing I look for in a tight end is a guy that can stretch us vertically. Thomas Bailey, that's not really him. So we'll see how he fits in this offense. Here is Bellissimo keeping it on the option. He picks up a first down. We're probably going to be looking to use some clock on this drive as well with the lead. Here's a quick throw. There's Thomas Bailey. But if he can do that... Convert these first downs. Be a sure-handed guy. He's going to get quite a few looks in this offense, though. Anjoku in the backfield here with Bailey again. Here's Bellissimo lining up, throwing this one deep on the right side, and it's a back shoulder throw to Omar Cooper Jr. That's an excellent throw by Bellissimo. The cornerback never got turned around, and Omar Cooper just catches it on that back shoulder. Perfect execution. Bellissimo now across to 50. Nobody to throw it to. He's just going to run this one himself and dive out of bounds. And he will pick up another first down. Bellissimo really showing his versatility as a quarterback. Is he perfect? No, but he can use his legs. Anjoku, handoff up the middle. He gets spun around. And he picks up a gain of seven. Three minutes to go here in this game. Another handoff back to Anjoku. He has another first down. And it's a gain of six. How good has Prince Anjoku been here in this debut episode? So now here we are inside the five. Here is Ornis, the backup freshman, and Marvin Ornis will score the second touchdown of the game. Ornis just fighting for that touchdown right there. He takes advantage, and now we go for two. Here is Anjoku back in the game, and he gets in. And now we have ourselves a two-score lead. So now here is Indiana up 24-7, Sacred Heart. Quick throw to the left side, and that is a catch by the tight end, Beck. And now here we go to about the 30-yard line. Back, Jay Harrison inside the red zone, almost in the red zone, at least in the field goal range, but who knows if their kicker can make it from here. Here's a deep shot, and that's a touchdown. Wow. The Sacred Heart football team is making this a game and now they're down by 10 and an onside kick recovered by cam shells and that should be it but they do have all three timeouts we do have to get a first down here to end this one 
So here we go, under two minutes to go. It's a third and short. Bellissimo throws. It's on Joku out of the backfield. He has it to the 26th, and that will be the ball game. Kind of a thriller here in the beginning to open this series. And how about the game, at least the first half from this defense? David Hardwick Jr. had two sacks on that opening drive. EJ McMacklin had three sacks in that first half as well. We were really trying to find out who we were on offense, what we could do, what we couldn't do. I did not cheat in this series. I made sure this was the first game I played at least in like a year. Like this was like the first game I played in a year on NCAA football. It was really fun getting back into the game and finding out what this team can do. I think we're going to have an interesting season. I mean, this was only Sacred Heart, but I at least saw that we could generate pressure. So figuring out, you know, which plays to call, we do have to use the coach suggestions, but being able to choose from those is okay for me, at least in this series, and then being able to open up the playbook. I don't know what we do well in offense yet. It was kind of a shaky game, to be honest, in the first half. We started to figure some things out here in the second, but it's going to take some games. We're going to really have to get used to this team, figure out what we can do well, because we're going to have to get good really quick because we're going to start to play some really hard teams in this series. But I saw some good things. EJ McMacklin, like I said, that pressure. Uh, I want to really figure out what we can do on the defensive end to force interceptions. But we did play a weaker team, so I don't want to, you know, take this game for granted and say, like, oh, we're rolling in this. This is just getting started because we have a tough road ahead, and it starts with Maryland as we play them at home. And one of the best overall quarterbacks in this entire game, Antalya Tagovailoa, he's going to be a special player. He does have a younger offense to work with. But he is still that dude in college football, and he's chosen to stick around at Maryland. In real life, he's looking to transfer, so we will see how we can stop him next episode. I hope you guys enjoyed episode one. I'm excited for this series. I've been working on it for about a couple of weeks, so we are ready in full gear, ready to go. Hit subscribe. Hit that like button. Stay tuned. Let's get it. Let's go. Boy, all that like Kenny. Still got crack, they feeling. Flow still hot like Phoenix. Shine so bright, I'm gleaming. This off top, I'm tweaking. Fresh out the rat like Nina. And I'm still trying to fight my demons. Cause we all gotta act like Tina. That's why I gotta ride with the Nina. Outside, it's a war going on.